Hey there, this is Jacob from Rebelflow, here today to show you how to train Yola v7 on your own custom data set. So before we dive into getting our hands dirty with training, I'm going to first review what's new in Yola v7. So you may have seen other Yolo networks like Yola v5 um, that are the iterations of the Yolo network which is used to detect objects and images. So Yolo v7 is really the latest evolution of uh, these new networks where people are trying to push uh, the accuracy of the models to be more accurate and the inference to be faster. So in this graph you can see here that uh, the Yolo v7 is trying to push that frontier of how fast you can inference and how, how good of predictions you're getting back according to the, the target that you're trying to model. So um, a little bit more here on what's new in Yolo v7. So here we can see an example of what Yolo v7 is primarily uh, used to do, which is to detect objects and images. So here you can see bounding boxes with associated confidence that confidences that Yolo v7 is detecting horses in these images. And for you, for your use case, you can think about what sort of task you want to model and what sort of objects you want to be detected in your images and what you want to be training Yolo v7 uh, to see. Um, so a little bit about what's new about the network is um, obviously, as I said, things are getting faster and more accurate. And the way they did this is by improving uh, the way the neural network is configured. So especially in the backbone here, uh, there's efficient ways that you can be uh, putting the backbone together that pools features together from your images. Um, and then there's some clever model scaling techniques of how when we make the neural network smaller or larger, uh, we can change different layers to accommodate those different sizes. Also, another technique that's used in it is reparameterization, where um, they're keeping tracks of different sets of weights and averaging them to make a model that's a little bit more robust. Um, and then there's also some of this auxiliary head uh, tuning. So rather than just tuning at the end of the network, you might want to tune uh, sort of like a shadow prediction head that's about halfway up uh, to make it so uh, you can propagate gradients through the network um, with a little bit more efficiency. Um, so now we'll kind of just dive into the uh, the code base here. So this uh, is the Yolo v7 repo. You can find it on GitHub and one can use um, GitHub. And uh, you can see here that it's laid out um, uh, with a train pi and a detect pi. Those are kind of the most important ones. So train pi is what we'll be using today to uh, train the neural network and detect pi is what you can use to make inference uh, once your neural network is trained. So importantly here, you're here today to learn how to train a custom Yola v7 uh, object detection model. So the most important thing to train a custom object detection model is you need to gather a data set of representative images. So here I'll show um, a little bit of example of how um, you can find data on Roboflow and how you can construct your own. So um, if you're just exploring, uh, you can go here to um, Roboflow Universe. Um, universe.roboflow.com and you can search for data sets. For example here I was kind of thinking what it might be like to model aerial sheep so you could look here and see what the community has done and see if there's any example data sets that you can pull from. Um, and then of course if you have your own uh, industrial example and uh, you need to bring your own data. So you need to be bring your own data to construct a data set that is particular to the thing that you're trying to train. Um, so this is a very important concept, especially for production apps that are going to be using uh, Yola v7 in, in production. So here is an example of a hard hat data set that you can have in Roboflow. And um, most importantly here, you'll have your images. So in your data set, you'll upload images that you can upload here. And then with each image, you can draw bounding boxes to, to have the thing that you want to detect. So here maybe we want to detect if people are wearing a helmet or not. Um, and so we can look at these annotations and you'll need to be drawing these boxes to be able to train Yola v7. So the way I like to think about the annotation process is like you're almost kind of actually training the network with each new box you draw. And the more data you have and the more robust uh, of a custom data set you've assembled, the better your performance is going to be in pretty much all cases. Um, so here's an example of maybe we missed something. Maybe we wanted to annotate a tree or something here. Uh, you can do that here and go and pass through your images um, and annotate them there. Um, after you're done annotating, you uh, generate versions. So this is where you can choose some standardization processes around the images that you make, and you can also make more of them 
in RoboFlow from the initial images that you annotated. This this is good uh, to get a bunch of new image variation just from the base annotations that you made. Um, and then once you're done with this, uh, you can export your data. So we export into all kinds of different formats here. Notably, the Yolo V7 PyTorch one is going to be of particular interest here. And that's going to give you um, a link to where the dataset zip is, as well as some Python code uh, that you can use to download it. So uh, today I'm going to be using the cache counter uh, uh, data set on Universe. So here you can see this data set's assembled to do different, uh, you know, uh, forms of cache, so cache and coins. Um, and so if we wanted to get this data set, we could go here and then we'd go here and we'd go download and then Yolo V7 PyTorch, show download code. Once we show the download code here, we can see uh, this, this Python snippet that we would bring over into the notebook. So now I'll go ahead and uh, dive into the Colab training notebook. So if you're not familiar with Google Colab, um, it is essentially a, a place where you can get a free GPU from uh, the courtesy of Google. Um, and you can prototype things up here and you can share it easily. So I'll post the link to this notebook uh, here below. So if you're following along at home, you can have the code uh, up on one side and the video up on another and, and do this with your own data set. So the first thing this, uh, this code does is to clone the repo and then we install the requirements. So this uh, will s install a bunch of things like PyTorch, um, which is uh, things that are necessary for the neural network to be running on the Colab machine and um, we'll set up the whole environment that way. So you can see here that I have already run these cells and I'll just kind of uh, buzz through them one by one. After that, um, we can download uh, or install the RoboFlow package to download the data set. And uh, here you can see that you'll need to bring your API key, which will get auto-generated from the website when you use uh, universe.roboflow.com or app.roboflow.com to assemble your own data set. And the data set gets downloaded here. And you can see that all of our cache counter images and such have come down. So in here, you can see the cache counter folder. And here we have the train, the valid, and the test. So during training, we'll be iterating through these train images here. And we'll be uh, seeing kind of how well we're doing on validation images. Um, so the validation images aren't seen by the network during training. And we'll just use them and their annotations um, to kind of get a sense of how well we're doing while we're training. Uh, the next step that we do here is we download the Yolo V7 pre-trained weights. So this is the Yolo V7.pt uh, file that is already pre-trained on the Coco data set, which is a large about 200,000 image data set that's often used to train object detection models and evaluate them. And so the Yolo V7 authors have published those weights for us. Um, and we'll, we'll pull those down so we can start from a basis of uh, some knowledge of modeling something rather than just kind of randomly initialized weights. Now here, this is the actual training cell. So here you do uh, train.py, so you invoke that with Python command, and you need to do that within the Yolo V7 uh, folder. And the important things about this command is there's um, a few things that you may want to set. So uh, if you really want to dive into the YAML, you can look and you can actually be uh, trying to change the network architecture a little bit. For the most part, I recommend, recommend just taking that as given. Uh, and then you can choose your batch size. So here I chose 16. Um, and then choose you can choose the number of epochs. So epochs, um, you probably want to do a lot more than one. So I just did one here to kind of show things during, flowing through the pipes. But your network will learn with the more epochs you do. So I probably recommend doing at least about 100 or 200 epochs um, to train uh, your, your neural network. And uh, then we'll point to the data set location. So this shows it. Uh, the, the actual data that it needs to learn from. And then these are the weights that we just downloaded to initialize you know, from, from uh, another point. Um, there's uh, more parameters. Uh, I'll link this blog below, which has a lot of what I'm talking about um, in writing. Um, and there's a lot more options that you have here. Um, and there are some things that you can get into and experiment with in tuning some of the hyperparameters, like the learning rate, um, and some of these other factors that allow you to choose different things about the way that the Yolo V7 network is trained. Of course, a lot of these things that come out of the box are going to be um, what's you know typically been researched or uh, found by the community to be working best. Um, but that said, sometimes you can find uh, slightly better training results um, by tweaking some of these things. Um, so it could be interesting to, to dive in there and, and, and see what you can find. Um, 
So once training kicks off, we can see that the model uh, gets initialized here. So we can see the convolutional layers getting formed, and then we can see um, down here how we formed kind of like the YOLO detection layer. Um, and so our images will be passing through this network and then making predictions out of this detection layer. And once training uh, kicks off, you'll see that your data gets loaded in here um, into the data loader, so it's prepped to be iterated through. And then with each epoch, it will cycle through the batch sizes of your images, um, which is considered an iteration. So it'll go through the iterations of your data and back propagate through the network. And you'll see here that you get some scores back of how the network is doing on your different classes and uh, the overall MAP score. So this MAP at 0.5 is kind of the main one to be looking at. You want to see that climbing and climbing and climbing, and the highest you can get there is 100% um, or 1.0. Um, so that's something to watch, and obviously the more epochs you train for, the better fit you're going to get. Um, and then after that, you can take a peek at the network by looking at it, doing real detections. So here we'll see, uh, we can do Python detect.py, and we'll invoke the weights that we just trained. So this best.pt is the model formulated at the end of training, and we'll freeze it there and then run inference with these weights. Um, and uh, you can also modulate this confidence. Uh, lower confidence will lead to more predictions. Higher confidence will lead to less, um, is one, one way to think about that. So we run these over all the test images and display the results. Um, so you can see here we only train for one epoch, so it's not really doing that well. Uh, obviously, when you do your own and you, you'll, you'll do a lot more uh, epochs, uh, you know, this, this uh, training will look a lot better. But you can see here, even in one epoch, we've already started to kind of get the notion of quarters and we started to get the notion of uh, where objects are and what, what objects are, um, which is pretty cool to see even with a, with a, quick, with a quick run. Um, so after that, um, you can uh, save your weights if you want to take this. So if you want to take this and uh, make it into an application, you can uh, take your weights, export them, and uh, then you can try to rebuild you know, a Docker container or something like that uh, that has all these dependencies to be able to run this in PyTorch. Um, you can also look into converting this into Onyx and TensorRT and off to other uh, destinations where you can run your model. Um, and you really want to make sure that, uh, you know, the training has looked good and then you, you have some conversions that uh, get your model to the place that you, you want to, to, to get it. So now one important topic to um, talk about before you go off the deep end and, and uh, deploy your model into production is, you want to be thinking about this um, data set that you've trained as kind of a living, breathing thing. So inevitably, once you deploy your yellow v7 model, you'll find new use cases where you might want to tweak the data set and teach the network new things. So a, an important concept here is called active learning, where you might want to upload new data uh, that you've encountered in the wild uh, back to your data set and then continue to iterate on it. So this shows an example of using our Python SDK to re-upload data back to your project. So this uh, same project that you were in, um, you can uh, access it again with your API key, and then you can upload um, you can upload data uh, to it. You can make an make an inference, uh, and then if you say want to write some rules around that. So here uh, it has you know some rules around the confidence of your prediction. So if the confidence isn't where you want it or, or there's some sort of interval that you're looking between, uh, you could upload uh, those images back to your project programmatically, and then you'll see them pop back up here in your data set. Um, and then you can export and start over again and go through the same uh, pipeline. And uh, RoboFlow is all about building those ML ops pipelines. Uh, so um, you know if you're using Yellow V7 at production capacity, um, of course, give us a look. and um, Hope you enjoyed this tutorial on training Yellow V7. It's an exciting time to be involved in computer vision and living at the forefront of uh, what is possible and seeing these new network neural networks evolve. And uh, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you in the next one.